remember, how many of you remember the story of Jonah and the whale or the great fish? Yes. And Jonah, what happened to him? He got swallowed and uh, had to spend some time inside the fish, didn't he? And, you know, there's no uh, way we could know exactly what all he experienced while that was going on, but when he got home, he started to explain to his wife and family what had happened to him being inside that thing and, and what all he saw and experienced and all of that. And his wife looked at him and said, well, it sounds a little fishy to me. <laughs> we often use that term fishy to say, uh, I'm not sure we believe that. We're not sure we're... Uh, in full belief of everything you just said. <laughs> she needed to uh, to believe a little more, didn't she? And today I want us to hopefully get a deeper understanding of what it means to be believers. Believers. We use that term. That's a scriptural term. And we often refer to one another as believers. But today I want us to get a little deeper understanding of exactly what that means because I think sometimes it's misunderstood. I think sometimes it's taken to mean if we're a believer, it means that at some point in our life we accept that Jesus Christ is our Savior. And that's true. We are part of the family of God once we do that. But I want us to look at a, a little closer today of what that means to be believers. And to do that, I'm going to look at uh, some scripture from Mark chapter 9. You don't have to write this down. We'll uh, put it up for you later. But in that chapter, Jesus takes Peter, Paul, and John, and uh, they go up on the Mount of Transfiguration, and uh, they see Moses and Elijah there. You remember that? And they uh, see Jesus, his clothes become so white, um, that it's, they've never seen anything that could be bleached that white. Uh, just an intense glow and, and all that. They have a great time up there. They talk about building altars. To, you know, to decide, they didn't know what to do uh, in response to all that. But anyway, they come back down, and in verse 14 it says, When they returned to the other disciples, they saw that there was a, loud, a large crowd surrounding them and some teachers of religious law were arguing with them and when the crowd saw jesus they were overwhelmed with awe and they ran to greet him and jesus first question was what is all this arguing about and one of the men in the crowd spoke up and said teacher i brought my son so you could heal him he's possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk and whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently into, uh, violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I ask your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Now notice what Jesus' response is to this. Jesus said to them, who is the them that he's talking to there? A lot of us have thought over the years that that was uh, the crowd he was talking to, but it wasn't. He was talking to the disciples. <laughs> he was talking to them. He said, you faithless people. Jesus was upset. You faithless people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? <laughs> He was upset because he expected more of the disciples than what he saw, than what had apparently happened here. So he says, You're, you faithless people, bring that boy to me. And they did. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth, and Jesus asked the boy's father, he said, how long has this been happening? And he replied, since he was a little boy. He said, the spirit often throws him into the fire or into water 
trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. If you can. And right there, Mark 9, 23, Jesus says, what do you mean if I can? What do you mean if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. There's that word, believes. Believers. What does it mean to be a believer? Jesus, I love his response to this. What do you mean if I can? It's like, who do you think you're talking to? Do you not recognize that I am, me and the Father are one? Didn't Jesus say that? He and the Father and the Holy Spirit are three in one. And when you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. He said, in so many words, he said, who do you think you're talking to? I'm the God who created all of this. In fact, the Scripture says Jesus was present, and there wasn't anything made that was made without him. <laughs> and he says, if I can, if I can, anything is possible if a person believes. <laughs> So Jesus turned it around and he said, you, you ask me if I can, I'm, I'm turning it around to you basically and saying, if you can, if you can believe, I can, I have the power. Can you believe? There's no limit to his power. Amen? Amen. There's no limit to his power. But the limit comes in when it comes to our faith. That's where the limits are. We put limits on what he can do by our lack of faith. So I want to think about that word believes and believers and what does that mean because I think there's a misunderstanding about that and I think many times when we think of ourselves as believers, we think of it in the terms of a one-time event. Kind of like uh, recently there was uh, this Women's uh, World Cup soccer tournament on TV. Anybody see any of that? Nobody into soccer? <laughs> it was interesting. Spain actually won, but uh, it was interesting because uh, little Jocelyn loves soccer, and she was fascinated watching those uh, young ladies kicking that ball, some of them could kick it almost the length of the field, and uh, coming in, scoring goals, how they would kick it uh, past the goalie and all that. She was, she was just fascinated to see some of that. But this team has been working, as all the other teams did, for years preparing for this World Cup event. They spent years scrimmage games, practice games, practicing. Uh, I don't know if they practice every day, but it wouldn't surprise me. They worked hard to prepare for this. And then they got into the tournament. They had to win uh, and work hard to get their way to that point. And when they finally won that final game and they were the winners, they won the World Cup, they were all excited, and you can see it in their faces there. Everybody's just happy and exuberant because they've worked hard for a long time to get to this point where they could celebrate as the winners, as number one, and uh, enjoy that victory. Well, I think sometimes we as believers have thought of our life with Christ and our believing like that. It's like you start out with a one-time event, and then as you live your Christian life, occasionally you might just have some shining moment where you have some faith, but then the rest of the time it's, we're just kind of down here. And then if, if we get in the right service and, and the right environment and the right songs and, and, and the preacher preaches just right, we might have a moment of, whoa, we, 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 we spike there for a second, and then we come right back down and it's a series of single events. Can anybody relate to what I'm talking about? We look back, and I've done this. We, we look back on times that we remember. I remember certain services I was in and certain things that happened 
miracles that happen. And, and we look back on those things, and we're, we're so excited about that one point in time, that one event. Oh, that was great. And I'm sure in years to come, these young ladies, as they get older, they'll probably stop playing the game of soccer, and, and they'll look back with relish at, at, at this time in their life when they enjoyed that shining moment. But I don't believe that God intended for our believing to be like that. You see what I mean? We're, we're believers and we, oh, something great happened. And we just, our life is a series. Maybe we have, a, you know, a few times here and there that we remember were great moments that we believed. I believe that, uh, that God intended something different. Michael Jordan said, I never lost a game. I just ran out of time. <laughs> uh, that's a winning attitude, isn't it? Yeah. I never lost a game. I just ran out of time. If they give me a little more time, I would have come through, right? But the idea was win, win, win. I'm, I'm expecting to win all the time. There's a book, and I haven't read this, but I want to. I came across this as I was studying for this sermon, but there's this book called B-Ball, The Team That Never Lost a Game, and it caught my attention, and I found out that it was written by the coach of a team of players who played basketball, but they were mentally handicapped. And they would play other teams that were made up of people who were mentally challenged. And he soon realized, he was frustrated at first because uh, his team, he couldn't get them motivated to win, to do what was needed to win. And then he realized that the other coaches weren't really pushing for that. They were just enjoying the game. And so it came to the point that uh, he realized that it was all about having fun with the game, and they just enjoyed it. And so they never lost a game because they were, they were just enjoying the journey. They were enjoying the game. And so basically they won every game. They never lost. I say that because I'm trying to lead up to this point and, and, and make it clear to everybody. Believing is not an occasional triumph. It's not an occasional, wow, that was awesome. Now to be several years before we experience another one like that. I don't think God intended for it to be that way. Our believing, I, I think God intended for our believing to be a way of life. Just the way we live. That we, uh, like MJ, we, we just expect to win. We just expect it. We look for the victories all the time. That we're never going to lose because we're always enjoying the journey. We're always enjoying walking with him every minute of our lives. Without pressure. Without pressure. So you see the difference between the two? Believing as a... Once in a while, some spectacular thing happens, and we, we really believe versus believing all the time. Really and truly, our lives should look somewhat like uh, the lives of those who led the early church. It should, not, it, it should not be a great surprise to us when we lay hands on somebody and they recover. It should not be a great surprise to us when we see things that the world calls a miracle happen. It shouldn't be a great surprise to us. We should expect that. That should be a way of life. Amen? Amen. Believers. I'm going to come back to this point again. I've got another way to, to say it that hopefully it'll, cha-ching, it'll register somehow in your brain. But I do want to mention this. Believing what? 
What is it? We call ourselves believers. What are we believing? We believe, uh, I think there are a, a few things that are really important that we believe as believers. We call ourselves that. We ought to know what we believe, right? We need to believe that God loves us. And I've preached it and preached it, and I'll keep preaching it as long as I'm able to. Because whatever concept you have of God's love for you, I can assure you it is not adequate. <laughs> it's, you, you can't comprehend the love that God has for you. So whatever understanding you have of God loves me, he loves you more than that. Amen? It's, it's beyond our understanding how much he loves us. So I need to believe that. With all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, believe that God loves me. And I also believe that God's plans for me are good. Now, that's really important for you to know that. God's plans for me are good. He wants good for me. He's not out to, uh, you know, he's not going to uh, break my legs to make life hard so that I'll, you know, grow somehow in that. He doesn't work that way. His intent for me is good. His purposes for me are good. His plans for me are good. And I also believe that his power is always working on my behalf. Do you believe that? Ooh, do you believe that? His power is always working on my behalf. Uh-oh, we may be way out on that branch now. I feel it. <laughs> We're way out on that limb now. Our, our words betray what's in our heart, don't they? Sometimes we, we, we say, yeah, I believe God's power. Do you really? And look, my wife has to catch me sometimes. I'll say something to say, do you believe he's working all things together for your good? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, she'll catch me. Because I'm a believer, and I need to believe every day, no matter what circumstances are going on, I need to believe that God's power is working on my behalf. Even if I can't see any evidence of it right now, I still believe it. Amen? Oh, are you receiving this? It's one thing to believe when everything's going good. It's another thing to believe when the circumstances look not so good. Amen? But we're believers. That's what we do. That's who we are. We need to believe that God loves us. His plans for us are good. And his power is working on our behalf. Now, I don't know about you, but back in the day when I, uh, Jack mentioned Tracy getting her first car today. Praise the Lord for that. Year of results, she got her first car. Well, I remember when I got my first car. It certainly was not a brand new one. And uh, it, some of you can relate to your first car. Maybe your car now, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, almost like firing on one cylinder. You know what I mean? Kind of got things held together with wire and duct tape and three ball tires and one flat one. And <laughs> you remember? The, I mean, I'm not making fun. We've all been there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm blessed now. Most of the time, if I need tires, I can I can get a set of tires. But I remember a time that you you know you get the one, <laughs> the one that's the worst. You know, yeah, and keep that other one for a spare. Yeah. So imagine a car that fires on one cylinder. It would put along and boom. <laughs> yeah, some of us have been there, done that, running a little ragged. People don't want to get behind you. 
because the smoke is so strong. Yeah, I know. Been there. But in our Christian life, sometimes as believers, we've been believing like a car running on one cylinder. It's like, poof. Then we go a ways, and then poof, and it hits again. <laughs> Folks, there's a benefit to when we come together for worship. There's a benefit to when we have great praise and worship songs like we did today. There's a benefit to preaching and, and fellowship together, all of that. There are benefits in all those things. But our believing shouldn't be when at, a, at a high point just because we're gathered here and we've been encouraged by other believers and all of a sudden we're, we're, we're believing real strong right now. But when we get out there tomorrow, the first time something negative or what seems to be negative happens, we're right back down. You see what I'm saying? Our believing should be a lot more steady than that. In fact, uh, you, know, you guys, anybody a, a mechanic in here? I know we got some. Brother Gary knows about car engines. Jack, Eugene, I don't know. Uh, but some of you know about engines. And for those of you that don't, an engine, when it's running, a conventional engine anyway, it's actually a series of little explosions that happens in the cylinder. It's a little controlled, tiny explosion. And that explosion generates the power as it's firing like that to make that engine work. And that's why if you have only one or two of those cylinders firing, it throws it out of whack. <laughs> it's running like that. But when you get all of them firing and they're in the right sequence and everything's going smoothly, you get something like that. How would you like to have that engine? That's a, that's a fairly new one they've come out with. It makes over 2,100 horsepower. That's an engine, isn't it? <laughs> but I can assure you that thing runs, it's, it's smooth. In fact, if you listen to uh, a motor, or perhaps if you're deaf, if you put your hand on the hood, deaf people can tell when an engine's running right. Did you know that? They can tell because they, they tell me it's smooth. It's smooth. They know it's supposed to be smooth, and if it's sitting there doing that, they know there's something wrong. A finely tuned engine like that, those little explosions are happening so fast, so often, in such a steady manner that you don't even hear any little explosions, do you? All you hear is, <coughs> as it's passing by. Right? It's just smooth. And I'm telling you, that is a good picture in my mind of us as believers. That's the way our life needs to look as far as our believing. I mean, we've got so many of uh, those little peak things happening so often that it's like steady. We, we don't even come off of one before the next one is taking place. That's just our life as a believer. We're believing all the time. I, I, look, I love a good song, a good worship song. I get blessed. Uh, I was at a funeral service uh, for, it was actually Catherine's sister uh, the other day, and there was a gentleman that got up, and he sang, uh, It Is Well With My Soul. And... <laughs> When he sang it, he started out, and it's like he had a pretty voice and everything, but he started out, and then he got a few lines into it, and he just stopped. And he came back, and uh, he said, oh, you know, it was just, he was thinking about what the song said, and the more he thought about it, the more he got into it, and he sang that song. It is well with my soul. And boy, people in the funeral home got up on their feet, <laughs> and it was a, a time of worship in there. I love a good song like that. I, I love to worship like that. But I don't ever want my believing 
to be activated only when it's a spiritual high. We're at a spiritual high point, and somebody's singing the right song and all of that. You know, I mean, I've look. I, I've been in church for a long time. I know how it goes. And sometimes we feel like we can't really have faith or believe until everything lines up just right. (laughs) But we're not made to run one cylinder. We're made to be that finely tuned machine, believing all the time, all the time. I mean, right now, when you leave today and all of that, Everything you do, every step, every time you go down the highway, uh, whatever you are doing today, everything you do should be done. You should be walking in that faith. I'm believing God all the time. I'm expecting to win. I'm expecting good things. I know that he loves me and that he's for me. His purposes for me are good, and his power is working on my behalf. I should be believing that all the time. And when I'm believing that constantly, there's no room for the words to come out negative, complaining, what happened here? I don't understand it. I didn't, I'm, I'm depressed. <laughs> there's no room for that. We're believers. Believers. So here's the point. Don't just believe. Be a believer. E-R. That's not emergency room. (laughs) Be a believer. It's a continuing thing, a continuing process. Not a one-time event. We don't just believe one time. We are believers. Any gamers in here? I got one. What does it mean to be a gamer? (laughs) That's right. At least he's honest. That's right. That's what it means. You put that ER on something, it means that's what you do. Ongoing, right? If somebody plays one game like me, I might play a game for a few minutes, and then it's three years before I touch another one. I wouldn't call myself a gamer. But I do call myself a believer. Believer. That means ongoing, not just a one time thing. I'm a believer. And you, trust me, you want to be a believer. Amen? Amen. You want to be a believer. That's who we are. That's how we roll, (laughs) that's our way. We are believers. So, does this make sense to you? Our believing, Jack, it, it's a wonderful thing when we accept Jesus as our Savior, but that is the beginning. It's not a once and done thing. That's the beginning. But we are believers ongoing. So, I encourage all of you today all of you who are here, all of you watching online, I encourage you, be believers, ongoing, continual, a process, walking in that. I am a believer. If somebody asks you if you're a Christian, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, I'm a believer. And you can say it like that, too, if you want to. That so you're a believer, yes, I'm a believer. And explain to them, what that means, what you're talking about. I I walk and live by faith. I walk believing every day, all the time. I'm a believer. Amen? Amen. So the question is, who wants to be a believer today? You want to? I do. I want to walk this thing. I want to live this thing. Believing all the time. And I'm better at it than I used to be. Thank you, Lord. I'm not perfect. I'm not there where I want to be, but I'm better at it than I used to be. Because I used to be, you know, very (laughs) yo-yo. 
Something good happens, you get on a high. Something not so good, my yo-yo's on the shelf. I'm, I'm more of a believer now, believing all the time. And I want to be even more like that, don't you? No more yo-yo Christianity. Let's be believers, constant, ongoing, walking by faith, not by sight. Believing God. Believing what? That he loves me. His purposes for me are good. And his power is always working on my behalf. Amen? Amen. If you would just believe those three things right there, it would turn your life upside down. It would make all the difference. And I'm trusting you're going to make that choice today. You're going to make that decision to be a believer ongoing. Okay? Amen. Now, for your journal, this is going to be an easy one. Be a believer. <laughs> now, you can doctor up those letters however you want to. I'll put some stripes on mine. But you can do it any way you want to, but uh, with markers or whatever. But I want you to emphasize that ER, and when you look back at this page, I want you to remember what we talked about today, our believing it in a one-time thing. It's a, an ongoing thing. We're believers. And down at the bottom, if you can't see that very well, is today's date. And our scripture text for today, which is Mark 9, 23. Mark 9, 23.